Hi, my name is Rishabh. I'm the co-founder and CTO at SuperTokens. I'm going to be taking you through implementing SuperTokens in a React and a Node.js app from scratch. Um, so as we can see, we have the app.js. Uh, this is the entry point for our React app, which at the moment just displays a white screen and a custom photo. Um, we have an API server, which is written in Express. And at the moment, it has a few middlewares and uh, an API route, which we will be implementing very soon. Um, so let's start with, with the app. Um, and with super tokens, uh, we essentially have a front-end SDK, a back-end SDK, and a core. Um, the front-end SDK is what we're gonna start off with. And let's, so let's follow these, these instructions. Uh, the first step is to do NPMI, which I've already done. Uh, so let's go on to the next one, which is calling the init function inside app.js. So let's go ahead and copy these import statements first. Um, and then the init function itself. Uh, within the init function, this init function, uh, we, we need to replace uh, these strings with something that makes sense for our app. So it's the super domains demo app, and then our API domain, which is essentially API server. Let's that is running on localhost. 3001 and our website is running on localhost 3000 right uh, the next step on the front end setup is um, to set up the routes so we are using react route to dom in our app so let's go ahead and copy this import statement um, we're going to import from super tokens or react and we want to call this function inside the switch for a React Router DOM, and the switch is here. So let's go ahead and call it that. So, uh, step number four is to do a session management, and we're going to come to this, come back to this after um, we set up, sign up, and sign in. So, at this point, if you navigate to slash auth, we should see a UI like this. So, let's check that out. And right here, we see a UI like this. Uh, we have sign in, we have sign up. And we also have forgot password. Notice that our custom footer is still uh, being rendered within this page. Um, so that's it for the front end setup. Let's go on to the back end. Uh, the first thing we want to do is again npmi, uh, which I've already done. And just like the front end, we want to call the init function. So let's go to API server and right here and call this inner function um, in the app info we want to replace it with the same thing that we gave to the front end so let's just copy that from the front end itself All right um, the connection URI is essentially the location of the super token score um, at the moment we're using Try the super tokens at IO, which is a core that is hosted by us um, so that you can get started quickly. But later on in this tutorial, we're going to see how we can replace this with a core running on our system using MySQL. Um, after this, we want to add the route, the course headers, which um, we can copy and paste as well in the allowed headers section. And we want to add the super tokens middleware before all our routes. Um, so right over here. The next step is to uh, call the error handler, but this this goes after all our routes. So right over here. And finally, we we want to add session management, which we will do shortly. Um, so at this point, we should be having sign up and sign in working. But before we sign up, uh, we want to fix one behavior of this app, which is if a session does not exist and the user navigates to um, the home page, it should redirect them to the auth page. So let's see how we can do that. So we want to check on the front end if a session exists and we can see the documentation for that in under common customization session, checking if a session exists. We want to, uh, so in our app.js, uh, we render the home component over here, we want to check if a session exists. 
If it doesn't, we want to redirect the user to slash auth. Um, so in order to do that, let's first copy this import statement. And then we can use session dot does session exist to, to check if it exists or not. And we want to do this inside the use effect. So, so if the session exists, we want to do something. Otherwise, we want to redirect the user to slash auth. Let's see if this works. So right now session does not exist. If I navigate to slash, as we can see, it successfully redirected us to slash auth. Uh, at this point, let's try and sign up. And as you can see, we successfully signed up. And because the session exists, it's no, it's no longer redirecting us to slash auth. Um, so in the case where session does exist, we want to extract the user ID and we want to display that on the screen. Right, so we already have a user ID state and set user ID function. Uh, we essentially want to call that with um, session dot get user ID. So according to this, um, the, the logic here, once the user ID is set, uh, this condition will be false. And then we'd end up rendering the main content for the home screen, which has a logout button and a view that shows the user ID. So let's see, let's reload the screen. And there you go. Uh, we can see the user ID of this user is, is this. Uh, to this page, we wanna add uh, two functionalities. One is to be able to call an API and the sign out, the sign out function. Uh, the API we'll be calling is, is uh, session info get. And uh, this API requires session management because it should only be called by users who are logged in. So uh, in order to add session session verification for this API, we go back to our docs and on the back end, we skipped step number six earlier. We're gonna add we're gonna add session verification to this API right away here. And once a session is successfully verified, uh, we can get useful information like the user ID or the JWT payload or some session data. Um, in this case, we want to uh, simply return the session information to the front end. Um, the session, for sessions to work, we also require um, a, a small change on the front end, which is what we had skipped earlier, which is step number four. Uh, since we are using Axios, we need to add interceptors to Axios for sessions to work. So let's go ahead and do that. In our, in our front end app, we use Axios in this view, which the call API view, which essentially renders uh, this section over here. Um, in here, we import Axios, and as the docs say, we should essentially add an interceptor to Axios. We do so right here. And the rest of the component is just calling uh, the API, uh, just like you would normally do, uh, and displaying the information in a window.alert. In case the session is expired, we redirect the user to slash auth. Um, so let's go ahead and reload the page and call this API. There you go. Um, so we can see the, the session information uh, and the user ID that the API has is the same as what the front end has. Uh, therefore, we set up sessions correctly. Finally, we want to implement the sign out button. Uh, the sign out button is, is inside this component, which has a callback, uh, logout clicked. And in the docs, the sign out docs is right over here under common customization, sign out. Um, so first we want to import the sign out function from super tokens and then we want to call the sign out um, function. Right. And the doc says that we should redirect the user to slash but we want to do that to slash auth. Let's go ahead and test it out. And we successfully implemented sign out. And we can test it out by signing in. And as you can see, we were successfully able to sign in. Uh, we can call an API that requires sessions. If uh, after signing in, if I try to navigate to slash auth, it will redirect me back to the home screen, which is perfect, and the sign out button. So we have sign in, sign up, reset password, and session management working in, in this app. 
Um, so one change that we still have to do is to replace tried or super tokens.io with, um, with our own instance of super tokens that is dedicated to our app. Um, so there are a couple of ways to run super tokens. Uh, we can run it with Docker, we can run it without Docker, and we can run it uh, with the managed service that we provide. In order to use the managed service, you just need to sign up to super tokens uh, and follow the instructions there. But let's focus on running with Docker for this tutorial. So we have a MySQL database, so we want to simply copy this uh, this docker run command. And as you can see, we started the docker, the docker container. It's running on localhost 3567. Um, so we can replace try superlocans.io with Um, once this is done, you just want to reload the page and let's try to sign up. And you can see that we successfully be able to sign up. You can call the API again. Everything works as expected. Um, one issue is that uh, this is using an in-memory database at the moment. So if you restart the Docker container, uh, the user we just created will disappear. Um, in order to give it, in order to connect it to the MySQL database, we we want to see the database setup MySQL section. It is open right away here. Uh, the first thing we want to do is create the super tokens database. Um, so I have the MySQL shell open here. Let's go ahead and create super tokens. And uh, to our Docker run command, we want to provide the user, the password, the host. The port is the default one works for us, and so does the default database name. Um, so let's run the Docker image with with these parameters and see if it connects to MySQL. So I have it right over here. Look at the new Docker run command. So in this, we, we bind it to the same port. We provide the user, which is root. Uh, you can give it a different user if you want. Uh, the MySQL password, which is root as well. Again, this would depend on your setup for MySQL and um, the IP address for the MySQL database. Um, and then we start this this container, and um, we see that it's it started. Let's um, test the connection. So let's see if uh, the if there are more than one rows in the key value table. So uh, let's use super tokens database that we just created, and there you go. It has three rows. So that means the connection was successful and SuperToken should be working with this database uh, right now. So let's try and create a new user. So after sign up, let's see the user information in the database. So let's show tables. So even possible users. And as you can see, we have one user in the database with this email the password hash, the time join, and the user ID. Um, everything else would work exactly the same way. We can call the API, uh, which has sessions. We can sign out. We can create new users. We can sign in, and we can reset uh, users' passwords. So I hope this tutorial was useful um, and uh, guided you to implementing super tokens. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, you can use our Discord to, uh, to ask them and we'd be happy to help. Thank you.